Hey everyone, it's Zach with Palantir Research. Palantir has a not so obvious monopoly when it comes to the US government software that will compound on itself over the years because of their Fed Start program. Well, it's more of an oligopoly and I'll show you why later. So first, I'll go over what Fed Start is and how this actually strengthens the IL6 holder's prestige and scarcity of this clearance, which is the highest level with only three companies holding this difficult certification who are Amazon, Microsoft, and of course, Palantir. So FedStart allows companies to securely work through Palantir in order to have access to government contracts that they wouldn't have access to otherwise without IELTS certifications. And this actually is deployed with their Apollo product that allows their security integration to run, making this all possible. Now, right now, this is for IL-5, but they do have plans within the next year to get this for IL-6. And Palantir is ensuring to advertise this as setting this up in weeks instead of the years-long process it took them. For Palantir's own journey, they note all the major pain points that make going with Palantir's FedStart so much easier to decide, especially for small startups, but even just regular businesses that want to get into government. So we all know there will be costs involved, about a million bucks here, so not huge for a giant tech firm, and of course any ongoing costs and any headaches with that. But for smaller companies, this is already a huge burden since the opportunity cost of pursuing this will take resources away from their product development and marketing. So they're gonna fall behind their competition, and it really makes it hard and difficult for them to pursue this with that opportunity gone. And they point out for Palantir, this was 18 months of building out your tech, writing hundreds of pages of documentation, and the added pressures of getting audited with a third-party assessment organization, and then actually passing the review in the end. So even if you put all these resources in, it's not gonna be guaranteed that you're gonna get IL certification. But I think the hardest requirement is probably this. You need to identify and secure an agency sponsor. So you can't just walk in at the top and demand to even be assessed. You need to build out that relationship and reputation that you work and are secure. So you're already at a disadvantage being outsider. And my assumption is that any mess ups will severely set you back or even eliminate you from being even considered in this process. So if you have any cyber attacks that maybe that went through or something happened with one of your employees and something just slipped through the cracks. So when securing this person or sponsor, they ultimately dictate getting your company in even the queue for being reviewed. And then the Joint Authorization Board, or JAB, who does this only selects 12 products a year. So this is very scarce just because of how many people even get assessed. So the scarcity of IL-6 is much more apparent with this kind of details, especially with that sponsorship requirement I went through. So if Palantir is just giving away IL certification, it sounds like how is this making this even scarce if more and more people can get access to it? Well, just look at all those requirements. It's a pain, especially with the sponsorship. And I'm sure larger tech firms with the resources will still pursue this over time, but they still have to play the game. So for anyone smaller though, you gotta be practical. The decision is a no brainer and there's no point in pursuing this endeavor if someone has done it before. Maybe down the line when you're big and successful, have the cash and time and resources, you want the headache of securing your sponsor and dedicating teams of resources solely to obtain this and maintain this so you don't have to go through Palantir. But if the value is already there in pricing, and I know that time is a huge factor for these startups, it may never be worth pursuing this on your own. Also, Amazon and Microsoft are basically a part of this monopoly, so it's making it an oligopoly, considering that FedStart runs on AWS and Azure Cloud. So the motivation for them to kick out Palantir doesn't seem to be there, but also the pressures of big tech dissuading you as a smaller company from pursuing this on your own is a real possibility. I'm not saying that they're gonna openly and publicly enforce IL certification as a monopoly, but when the biggest cloud platforms are there alongside Palantir in this product, it creates an environment where you don't necessarily wanna bite the hand that feeds you. Now, the real kicker here, I think, is that the opportunity to scale here is massive in the billions of dollars for Palantir because of usage-based pricing. So if we establish they are basically a monopoly or oligopoly, and they are the gateway for these smaller companies to participate in higher certifications for government contracts, then essentially, whatever they collect as the tollway making their products accessible means they will basically grab a piece of almost every small software company contract because they're reliant on FedStart in the first place. Why go through the headaches I explained before when you can get started now, make money now, make your investors happy now? Now down the line, they'll keep assessing the building up costs, but startups are on a tight timeline already, especially if they're relying on VC funding and have a short runway. And with the usage-based pricing, 
all the motivations align to where these startups want to do more business, right? For more revenue, they got to gain users for their stickiness. But in turn, this means they will always need to up their payments to FedStart. Palantir simply wants to make IELTS certification contracts more accessible after their own headaches. But doing it through them also makes it easier for the ultimate customer in the end, the government. So it's not a one-way street here. First, the government has a history with Palantir, and this relationship and trust took decades to build. Now, you simply cannot buy that with the money you have if you're an outsider, even if you're a big company. You'll need to do the hard work or partner or work through Palantir, which is the Fed start opportunity. And for the government, do you think they want to go through this IL certification process? They're already stretched as it is when it comes to evaluating their current holders because they are reporting and giving assessment requirements and someone has to verify that stuff. So the more people that are IL certified, the more avenues that need to be reviewed. So it's not just a one-way street that FedStart helps only small startups gain access, but really it helps the customer in the end who gets more value in streamlining a process for them through a trusted source of Palantir and of course their other partners of AWS and Microsoft. So that single point of contract who already went through the process is honestly the preferred way that the government would want. They don't want to make things more complicated as it is. They want to go through a single source that they've already trusted, have vetted thoroughly, and have, of course, a strong track record with. So in the end, this monopoly or duopoly or oligopoly, whatever you want to call it, is self-reinforcing on its own because both sides, the customers to Palantir, which are the small startups, but also the ultimate customers of these businesses that are bringing services to the government, both want this to work because it makes both of their lives easier. Now, if something is very, very easy, then it's always going to be much more harder to pursue the real route in this case, which is getting certification yourself. So as I mentioned, that sponsorship will hold you back if you don't even build up that reputation. And who wants to put in the time and effort to do that, especially if you don't know if you're going to be around for long as a startup. And for context on the dollar amount now, which we haven't talked about at stake here, the U.S. federal government spends around $100 billion per year in software, but also more specifically for smaller companies, it's still a big pie here. It was reported around $17 billion for over 200 deals in defense and aerospace were agreed upon with U.S. venture capitalists, and that's only for the first five months of 2023. So if we extrapolate that to the whole year, that is potentially $40 billion at that rate. Or it could even be more, depending on the timing of the contracts, if this possibly accelerates near the end of the year. So yeah, it's a huge opportunity to get even a small piece of this, even if 1% of that, that's going to be in the hundreds of millions of dollars. And knowing that this is possibly growing with more geopolitical events happening, but also the government picking up on their software investment, this really shows that FedStart is coming out at a good time while this is starting to ramp up. But this is just my opinion. What are your thoughts on this? Do you agree FedStart has this much potential here? Or maybe it's overblown considering this is for the more certified contracts. Let me know below and I'll see you in the next video.